And here's Tom Griswold preparing to talk to Mr. Mark Summers and uh, Tom uh, sanitizing his hands before he talks to Mark Summers. That's interesting. Even though Mr. Summers is not in our building, that's a weird thing I did. I don't know why I did that. I, guess associ yeah, you I always associate you, Mark, with, with cleanliness and being neat and having everything in its place because um, you've written a great book about your experience with OCD. Uh, Mark, uh, hello, sir. How are you? I'm well, sir. I just took off my ascot right before I uh, came <laughs> off the yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you've, you've been around a lot of famous Hollywood people. Anybody you know yeah. wear an ascot? Uh, George Hamilton would always wear an ascot. Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Peter Bogdanovich always wore one. Yeah. Yeah. Charles yeah, Nelson right. Riley would wear one. Yeah. 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 Did you have any affect? Oh, do, I don't remember that. Do, do, <laughs> do you have any Hollywood like affectations? Do you like wear a cape or? Uh, no, I gave up the ascot. I gave up the cape. Um, no, I just try and wear my pants more often. But other than that, I am, you know. <laughs> All right. You're one of the few. You, you didn't develop any of those Hollywood habits like, you know, cocaine addiction. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> I've, I've never done drugs. I've never even smoked a cigarette. I'm like the most boring human in the history of the world. But uh, you're going to prove that you're not boring by uh, talking about your new podcast. Before we get to that, I want to remind everybody, when you were here, you were telling us about moving to uh, Hollywood. And there was a period of time where it was you and Letterman and a couple of other comedians that were doing the show warm-ups. That was such an interesting story. Can you give me the short version again? Yeah, I was uh, called the king of warm-ups at the time. I was doing uh, Star Search, Alice, Webster, What's Happening Now, and Soap was the big show at ABC, and I was lucky enough to get that job. And uh, in the studio complex that I was to the right of me was a show called Bosom Buddies that uh, our friend Bob Saget was doing. And to the left uh, of our stage was uh, Barney Miller, and Dave Letterman was doing the warm-up on that. And so it was kind of the way to get in back in the day uh, to get your chops uh, sort of together and also uh, to be noticed by Hollywood producers. So it was a good way to make a living. Now, were you doing magic tricks or as well as comedy? When I first started, because I didn't know that you had to stand out there for 47 hours and entertain these people, you know, at, at one point I was showing pictures of my kids in my wallet because I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so, yeah, I started doing magic and then slowly built up enough comedy routines and interactions because people come to a TV show and think it's going to be 30 minutes to go home. Uh-uh. Uh, it generally takes about four hours to record 22 minutes of, uh, of a show. So did you do a lot of uh, So Where Are You From stuff back and forth with the audience? Opened with uh, a lot of uh, where you from uh, stuff. Now, you know, after I left the warm up world, you know, they would bring in pizzas and throw candy and have a band and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I, I never resorted to, to that, but, uh, you know, you had to pace yourself. When I was doing soap, keep in mind, I had Billy Crystal, John Biner, and Jay Johnson there. So I could go to Jay. Bill, Billy would do his Muhammad Ali for me. Uh, John Biner would break into, you know, routines I used to see him do on the Ed Sullivan show. So if you have a cast that's cooperative, you can often throw it to them. But, you know, sometimes you're not so lucky or sometimes they're are just not so nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Our guest is Mark Summers. And uh, Mark is uh, uh, retired, kind of, uh, from some of the stuff that you used to do. Most famous uh, for some, for Double Dare. Yep. And uh, were you one of the first guys to wear athletic shoes on TV with a sport coat and... I think I might have been the guy who started that whole situation, which I didn't even want to do. If you watch the first 65 episodes, if you go to Paramount Plus, there's like a, a bunch of these shows I did from, you know, 100 years ago. Uh, I was wearing penny loafers, and uh, they finally said to me, you know, we just signed this deal with Nike, and you got to wear uh, sneakers. And it, it became a look with the tie and the sneakers, and, you know, it was a pretty positive thing. Oh, I didn't realize that that was something that was shoved down your throat. Uh, oh, yeah. That no. and getting messy. After the first 65 and the show was doing well, they did focus groups, and they said, yeah, we love the guy who's the host, but he's always so neat and clean. Can we get him slimed? And uh, that was a turning point as well. You can imagine what that was like, Tom, huh? Yeah, and, and you are uh, someone who was, um, you've talked about your OCD. You like being clean. It looks like you yeah. have a nice, crisp, clean shirt on right now. I can tell everything in the background of your house looks sparkling. White everywhere, white on white on white. A touch, a touch of gray. Uh, but you have yeah. something new coming. You are joining the world of podcasters. Give me the information, please. Yeah, I'm probably out of my mind. There's uh, hundreds of thousands of these things, but uh, people think that uh, I, I might have an audience. It's called Mark Summers Unwraps, and um, you know, you kind of have to have a theme, and mine is overcoming obstacles. You go to a, a Broadway show or a, a movie or a TV show, and you say, boy, the people in that show are the luckiest humans in the world. And what you don't realize is uh, how many tons of BS they've had to go over, around, and through to get to that successful spot. And so uh, we've had some pretty fascinating people. We're kicking off with uh, Anthony Ramos, 
Carlos, who I first met when I was doing summer stock. I was uh, playing Vince Fontaine in Greece, and he was this 17-year-old kid who was amazing and, you know, ended up being in Hamilton, and he's now starring in every movie. Um, we did Al Roker, uh, who had some great stories. Uh, Guy Fieri, um, we just did Fluffy, uh, Gabriel Iglesias, uh, who okay. has some great stuff. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Fluff, Fluffy is a good friend of the show and a super nice guy. And parenthetically, did you see that Guy Fieri is going to do um, a uh, for ten thousand people a pregame Super Bowl tailgate party? Oh wow, yeah. that'll be very interesting. He does that every year? Yeah. I know he's always him and Bobby Flay are at the Super Bowl every year doing some sort of event. So uh, I was just at his party. He turned fifty five. I can only tell you what it was like to go to a Guy Fieri party at his, first at his house the night before, and then at some he took over. A restaurant uh, it was kind of a who's who of uh, food and then some uh but uh you know one of the one of the great nights that i've had in, in uh, most recent times and you're associated by the way with uh, with food and uh, do you yeah. cook I do. Actually, uh, I'm the king of barbecue here. My wife is much better a uh, cook in the kitchen, but for some reason has never figured out how to uh, do the barbecue thing. So uh, I, I'm that. And here in uh, California on the Central Coast, uh, you can barbecue just about every night. So uh, we do it often. I see. I see. Now, uh, tell me more about the podcast. When does uh, wh what is the, how does one Monday. find it? Uh, the 13th of February. Uh, in fact, if you watch The View, uh, they're doing a nice little piece on me Monday as well to uh, help promote this thing. Cool. You've been kind enough to do it. I just did uh, W2F with Mark Marin, who loves you guys and is very kind uh, talking about uh, being with you guys uh, over the years. And so, um, you know, it's hard work because you don't just walk in and, and you know, ask questions. I do tons of prep to find out uh, behind the scenes of what's going on here. And we've brought several people to tears, not that I'm trying to be Barbara Walters in any way, shape or form, but for some reason, people open up to me and uh, I'm excited about, uh, you know, the launch on this on Monday. Every week we'll do a new one and uh, we hope people tune in uh, wherever they hear their podcasts, as they always say. Now, I, you mentioned that you were in the play Grease. Yes. Were, did you have a singing role? Well, believe it or not, uh, I did, uh, although Vince Fontaine is uh, drowned out by uh, tons of other people, so thank God they didn't get a chance to hear me too much. But after I, you know, I had diagnosed with cancer, and then I was in a car accident where I broke every bone in my face, and I thought, well, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get many more chances. The one thing I always wanted to do was theater, and I uh, found a guy who, you know, knew me and had just taken over theater, and he said, do you want to play Vince Fontaine? I said, do I have to audition? He said, no. And I said, I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. And uh, as a matter of fact, you know, I did this one man show, which we launched in a place called Bloomington Play Rock Project in Bloomington, Indiana. Then we did the Adirondack Theater Festival. And this summer, uh, I'm coming back and doing it again uh, in a theater uh, right outside Hershey, Pennsylvania. We're going to Buffalo, New York, and uh, it's called The Life and Slimes of Mark Summers. And uh, I'll be back. As they say on the boards, doing that this summer. But, the, yes. but there will not be any singing. Uh, no, I've been told not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, and your brother is a world-class drummer. I know that yes. is an absolute fact. Did he hear yeah. you sing? Did he say anything? Uh, yeah, he's one of the first who told me to stop doing it. Mike, Mike uh, you know, was the drummer for Liza and, and Johnny Mathis and Henry Mancini and conducted for Marvin Hamlish for years. He's had one hell of a career. And uh, he knows music and, and, and knows better than to have guys like me <laughs> singing, which is pretty funny. Well, I'm glad they put your face back together. You look very handsome. <laughs> Thank you, sir. If not, more if not more handsome than before. It's not just yeah, sickening he... looking at you at all. Yeah, really nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, but, you know, you really do look great. You, one could not tell that you had had your face uh, meet uh, a steering wheel or whatever it was exactly. It was on the back of a cab, wasn't it? Yeah, I hit the uh, credit card machine is what I hit. Oh! Uh, wear a seatbelt, so uh, wow. it's amazing. But, you know, when I uh, go and uh, pay for stuff now, I just kind of have to put my face down. And, uh, <laughs> oh, he's, the, the chip is still embedded, huh? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a problem. Mark there, Summers, huh? thank you, Mark. Once again, it's Mark Summers Unwraps. And uh, you can find out about the uh, about the podcast. Always a pleasure, Mark. And hope to see you uh, here, sir. soon. We'll see you soon. Take Thank care, you everybody. Bye-bye. See you, Mark.